a young Minnesotan picks a bouquet in a 200-acre garden south of Minneapolis. Actually, the millions of flowers blossoming in this trial ground were not grown for decoration. Any more than this corn being harvested on another Minnesota farm is intended to be eaten. Both the pom-poms and the corn were grown for seed stock purposes. Seed that will be processed, packaged, and sold by Northrop King and Company, largest general seed house in the world. As the wagon box is filled, it's towed to the husking and sorting tables, where snapping rolls remove the husk. The men not only take care of husks the machine misses, but also cull out faulty ears. This corn is only one of Northrop King's many hybrids. It's called KS2. Like other grains, vegetables, and flowers, it was developed for planting in a specific part of the country where specific soil and climatic conditions prevail. At one of the company's five plants that process corn alone, the truckload is transferred to drying bins where hot air will dry the corn so it can be safely stored through the winter. Sample kernels are taken to be sent to Minneapolis for tests that will show how the seed will germinate when placed in the ground in the spring. After drying, the corn is again checked for off-shaped, immature, or damaged ears, and then the kernels are removed. At the seed laboratory in Minneapolis, sample seeds from all the different processing plants are tested in germinators, which show what percentage will sprout and grow. In the case of these beans, it's 96 out of 100. That's important information for the grower, no matter what the size of his crop. Also important is the reaction of the seeds in this germinator, which duplicates conditions that will prevail during a cold, damp, raw spring. It suggests how suitable a particular type of seed is for early planting in that sort of climate. No home gardening enthusiast ever devoted as much attention to a sprout as thousands get here every day. Root growth gets particular attention, for that tells how well they'll progress after sprouting in the field. Some seeds, notably beans, peas, and corn, must be hand-picked to get rid of those considered unsatisfactory. The bad ones might be off-color or off-shape, have damaged seed coats, or show indications of blight or disease. Out they go. Here's a check on a sample of oats. The sharp-eyed young lady determines the purity and trueness to type of the seeds in the shipment. Just a few of the tests that go on endlessly. In addition, there are several ways in which the seeds can be cleaned and graded mechanically and thus accurately labeled so the buyer will know exactly what he's getting. They're sorted by size, by weight, shape, and diameter, all for the purpose of eliminating the hit or miss approach to agriculture. Many seed houses concentrate on lawn seed, let's say, or hybrid corn or flowers or vegetables. Some aim at the market gardener, others at the home gardener. Here they do their best to serve everybody who uses seeds. For example, these seeds being automatically weighed out into packets are obviously intended for the grower who plants not for business, but for pleasure. Tiny scales inside measure out the right amount to a fraction of an ounce. The company handles an extremely rare type of petunia whose seeds cost $180 an ounce. But needless to say, they're not packaged like this. And our seed producers are concerned much less with such exotic and expensive novelties than they are with improving our basic horticulture, supplying us with the seeds we really need in greater quantity, in purer strains, at less cost than was ever thought possible. Thank you.